Lynch anticipated that the next generation of air combat would require fighters capable of achieving absolute dominance in the skies. The history of the YF-23 fighter aircraft, perhaps the most revolutionary in the history of aviation, is like a solid bestseller. There's a tough confrontation with a rival, a dramatic defeat. With each era, military history faces crossroads where technological innovation collides with institutional tradition. These crossroads produce decisions that quietly steer the destinies of weapon systems, often revealing as much about the organizations judging them as about the technologies themselves. In the early 1990s, such a moment played out in the U.S. Air Force's advanced tactical fighter ATF competition, a contest between Northrop Grumman's YF-23, known as the Black Widow, and Lockheed's YF-22. The ATF program was launched to ensure U.S. air superiority for decades. The parameters demanded not only speed and agility, but also unprecedented stealth, the ability to evade detection by adversary radar systems. Locked away on secure bases and tested on secret ranges, the YF-23 and YF-22 emerged as the physical embodiment of this vision. On paper, the Northrop YF-23 held considerable promise. It was widely viewed as stealthier than its competitor, with a radar cross-section remarkably low for its time and faster in level flight, a result of aerodynamic innovation and powerful engines. Many defense analysts believed the YF-23 was years ahead of any adversary and even ahead of the U.S. military's own appetite for change. However, these strengths came with uncertainties and sparked debates within the Pentagon that would ultimately decide the platform's fate. Those debates did not center solely on technology, institutional tradition, what the Air Force valued, what it was prepared to absorb, and how it measured risk played a critical role. The allure of the Black Widow's advanced design confronted the Air Force with a question larger than any specification sheet could answer. Was the service willing to move away from the traditions honed over decades, or would it instead embrace the familiar comfort offered by more conventional solutions? Understanding why the YF-23's promise ended up shelved, despite its undeniable technical merits, requires examining the arguments that ran through the halls of the Pentagon and echoed in classified hearings. Was the U.S. ready, both culturally and pragmatically, to field a fighter that redefined the very meaning of air combat? The Ghost in the Hangar The YF-23 was not just another prototype. Its design philosophy was a statement about the future of aerial warfare. Its diamond-shaped wings, canted tails, and sunken engine nacelles were deliberate attempts to reduce radar returns. Every feature was engineered for stealth, enabling the jet to slip through detection networks and strike before an adversary could react. The focus on supercruise, the ability to fly supersonic without afterburners, was another leap, extending its reach and reducing vulnerability to infrared detection. Test data bore out the YF-23's advantages. Reports and analyses highlighted its lower radar cross-section and superior speed compared to the YF-22, placing the Black Widow in a technological bracket that, for a moment, seemed out of reach for any competitor. Observers in the defense community took note that in areas central to modern air power, namely survivability against detection and the ability to strike first, the YF-23 set a formidable standard. Yet this very ambition unsettled some within the Pentagon. The YF-23's performance was so advanced in some respects that the institution itself faced a challenge of adaptation. Redesigning tactics, maintenance regimens, and training pipelines for a fighter so oriented toward stealth and BVR, beyond visual range, engagements was no small demand. These were not abstract concerns. They pointed directly to the complexities of absorbing cutting-edge hardware into daily operations. Questions emerged about practicalities. Could the new radar-absorbing coatings and sophisticated engines be maintained reliably by Air Force crews? Would the pace of technological advancement outstrip the training and sustainment infrastructure required to make the jet combat ready? Air Force traditions were anchored in the experience of dogfighting, the reliance on maneuverability and pilot intuition forged in decades of air combat, from Vietnam through the Cold War. The YF-23, by contrast, 
asked the force to bet on a future in which dogfighting might never happen and where technological superiority would compensate for doctrinal shifts. Some Pentagon officials responded with caution, seeking to delay the ATF program or curtail its funding. A request for $74 million was made to keep the YF-23 on minimal development funding, an amount that reflected a desire to sustain the option without committing the full resources that would have signaled unequivocal support. History would show that this was a sign not of a lack of faith in technology, but of uncertainty over the Air Force's readiness for the changes it would entail. Agility versus ambition. In competitive trials, the differences between the YF-23 and its competitor sharpened. The YF-22, later developed into the F-22 Raptor, was designed to prioritize maneuverability and agility in close-range engagements, inheriting a lineage and philosophy shaped by the F-15 and F-16. Its flight control surfaces, thrust vectoring, and cockpit ergonomics were optimized for high G-turns and rapid changes in direction. The intrinsic message, dog fighting skill and pilot intuition, must remain at the heart of air combat, even in an era of guided missiles and stealth. In contrast, the YF-23 embodied a radically different approach. Its performance was optimized for evasion, persistence at high speeds, and engagement at long range. Test pilots noted that the YF-23 felt uncannily stable and effortless at high speed, with fly-by-wire controls imparting precision, but a different tactile feedback compared to more traditional designs. Where the F-22 could reportedly outturn and outclimb the YF-23 in certain regimes, the Black Widow was lauded for its supercruise performance and stealth. This divergence reflected not just a technical choice, but a cultural one. U.S. Air Force doctrine, especially after the experiences of Vietnam, focused heavily on agility, ensuring survivability in visual range combat when missile technology or situational awareness faltered. Many in the service were wary of placing too much faith in long-range engagements and radar-guided missiles, acutely aware that technological assumptions occasionally failed under the stress of real combat. Institutional comfort became a major factor in the final decision. As one defense analyst framed it, the Air Force was more comfortable with a platform that could dogfight, even if simulations showed the YF-23 could avoid detection and strike first in optimal circumstances, decision makers sought assurance that, if forced into close combat, the aircraft chosen would give pilots a fighting chance using proven tactics. The YF-22's agility and the familiarity it invoked helped tip the scales. Those drafting recommendations recognized the YF-23's superior stealth and speed, but the uncertainties of future conflicts, the mixed record of new tactics and technologies in air warfare, and the resilience of institutional tradition all weighed heavily. The path of manageable risk proved more appealing than a leap into the unknown. Unfinished business, the Pentagon's calculus. Technical capability alone does not guarantee adoption in defense procurement. The YF-23's advocates faced not just technical hurdles, but strategic and budgetary calculations. In the early 1990s, the shifting post-Cold War landscape placed new constraints on defense spending. Planners were keenly aware that the breakthrough features of the YF-23 might raise unforeseen challenges in development and support. The Pentagon's decision to request only $74 million for minimal development funding of the YF-23 spoke volumes. This approach reflected caution, keeping the door open to technical advances without the deeper institutional transformation that a full-scale commitment would require. It was a way of hedging bets, maintaining flexibility in uncertain times. Inside the Air Force, the culture of operational readiness, shaped by experience and doctrine, continued to emphasize the need for agility, reliability, and maintainable systems. Bringing the YF-23 into full service would require revamping not only the training pipeline, but also the support infrastructure and logistics. 
Concerns grew over whether maintenance crews could easily adapt to new materials and whether the sophisticated stealth features would prove robust in operational environments. Another layer of complexity came from the defense acquisition ecosystem. Large procurement programs must navigate a web of industrial partnerships, congressional oversight, and the interests of multiple stakeholders. The F-22's program partners brought substantial lobbying power, a broader industrial base, and a compelling jobs argument to Congress. Northrop Grumman, while respected for its innovation, faced challenges in this arena, amplifying the headwinds against adopting the YF-23. The sum of these considerations, budget limits, industrial pressures, and institutional traditions, pushed the Pentagon toward a more conservative path. The YF-23 was seen as too advanced, not because of inherent flaws, but because fielding it would have demanded a parallel transformation in doctrine, training, and support. The challenge was not if it could be built, or even if it could perform, but whether the military and its supporting structures were ready to absorb it. When vision meets doctrine, the story of the YF-23's rejection is emblematic of the friction between leap-ahead innovation and the realities of operational integration. The Black Widow's unmatched stealth was both its calling card and its challenge. While computer models and test ranges suggested dramatic advantages, the leap to operational reliability was daunting. Some defense experts cautioned that adversaries of the era might not be able to fully exploit the gaps that the YF-23 exploited. Most were not fielding radars or sensors sophisticated enough to mandate such extreme stealth. The Pentagon's own experts debated whether the cost and effort of adopting such an aircraft was justified by the immediate threat environment. The institution's readiness to trust in software, sensor fusion, and long-range engagement was tempered by reminders of recent history. The Air Force, shaped by the practical realities of Vietnam and the Cold War, was reluctant to bet everything on a future for which traditional dogfighting might still matter. Developmental and budgetary challenges loomed as well. The ambitious vision for the platform could run into a variety of technological and budgetary challenges, as noted in contemporary analysis, underlining that fielding such a disruptive aircraft demanded more than just technical achievement. It required deep organizational transformation and sustained investment. Concerns also appeared at the practical level. Would maintenance crews be able to support complex coatings and unconventional engines? Would pilots adapt to digital-centric control systems and new tactics? And would the YF-23's advances remain secure in a world of increasingly sophisticated espionage? Ultimately, the Air Force's conservatism was grounded in these realities. The YF-22, while not as stealthy or fast as its rival, followed a more familiar path to readiness, with operational and cultural risks deemed more manageable. The broader context of tightening budgets and a shifting strategic environment confirmed the appeal of evolutionary rather than revolutionary progress. A lasting impression? While the YF-23 did not enter service, its influence persisted. The debates it sparked over stealth, speed, and agility have shaped subsequent approaches to air combat. The ATF contest exemplified the tension between bold technological vision and the requirements of institutional adaptation. In the years that followed, Themes raised by the YF-23's design resurfaced as global competitors invested in their own advanced air power. Analysts examining sixth-generation fighter programs have noted echoes of the Black Widow's features. Extreme stealth, higher cruising speeds, and design priorities that challenge conventional air combat tactics. The lessons of the YF-23 have thus informed a new generation of requirements and concepts, underscoring both the promise and pitfalls of disruptive innovation. There is continued recognition among historians and defense professionals that the choice between the YF-23 and YF-22 was a critical inflection point, a moment when vision and practice were carefully weighed. While the Black Widow became a symbol for ambitious innovation, it also highlighted the legitimate administrative and operational hurdles inherent to dramatic leaps forward. The strategic environment continues to evolve. Recent coverage of allied nations' sixth-generation programs, notably those of Japan, 
has drawn attention to design similarities with the YF-23. While some interpret this as evidence that U.S. innovation has influenced global trends, it is also a reminder that the full value of cutting-edge technology may only become clear as threats and requirements shift over decades. The Pentagon's funding decisions encapsulate this dynamic. The request for minimal development funding was pragmatic, maintaining a path forward while preserving flexibility. The YF-23's legacy is thus not a simple tale of missed opportunity, but an enduring example of the complex trade-offs faced by large institutions charged with adopting transformative technologies. Even debates over the future, such as manned versus unmanned platforms, retain echoes of the questions first raised by the YF-23. Trust in software, faith in paradigm shifts, and the challenge of integrating radical advances into established processes all remain central to current acquisition and doctrine discussions. High stakes and enduring lessons. The YF-23 story reflects the core tension all advanced militaries face the balance between pursuing breakthrough technologies and sustaining operational continuity. The Black Widow, with its unmatched stealth and innovation, tested the limits of organizational readiness as much as those of engineering. The Pentagon's cautious approach, centered on maintaining minimal development funding, was not lack of vision, but a rational response to budget, doctrine, and uncertainty. Risk mitigation took precedence over the temptation of a technological leap, a decision that was both prudent and controversial, depending on one's perspective. To its advocates, the YF-23's shelving represented lost potential and an opportunity cost measured in years of technological leadership. To others, it was a demonstration of responsible stewardship, a recognition that game-changing systems must be fielded within organizations ready to support and sustain them. Ultimately, the YF-23's legacy endures. The project is referenced in ongoing discussions of sixth-generation fighter development, cited as both a milestone and a warning. Decision-makers continue to weigh the same trade-offs that defined the ATF contest. How to integrate innovation while preserving the ability to execute and succeed in unpredictable real-world scenarios. In the end, the reasoning behind the YF-23's exclusion from service was not a condemnation, but an acknowledgement. The platform was too advanced to enter service by the standards of its day, an innovation that exposed the gap not between what was possible, but what could be fielded by institutions grounded in tradition and responsible for national defense. The skies may never have belonged to the Black Widow, but its legacy endures in the trajectory of American air power. The careful, measured progress that followed was shaped by the lessons, both inspiring and sobering, of the ATF competition. As new generations of aircraft are conceived, the questions raised by the YF-23 remain essential. When should militaries dare to leap, and how do they ensure that their institutions are ready for the future they seek to build? The enduring lesson of the YF-23 is that technological possibility alone does not dictate the path of progress. Instead, the courage to trust innovation, to adapt institutions, and to manage the risks of genuine transformation continues to define the limits of what can be achieved. The Black Widow's shadow, cast across decades, serves as both guide and warning for those shaping the future of flight.